Have you ever had trouble forgetting about your job after you came back home? It's like you're already home, right? But it feels as if you were either still working or you were stressed out by the tasks that you have been working on. In the end, you probably cannot relax or fall asleep. If this is the case for you, this video is for you. I will show you a method that will resolve this problem immediately. So you can finally have a rest and sleep at night. My name is Pavel Gambus and this is the next episode about applied psychology. Let's go! Thoughts that swirl around your head are just a sign from your memory. In order to understand precisely what's going on, let's first have a look into a story about the discovery, thanks to which you will be able able to trick your brain to forget about your tasks. It was the year 1927. A Lithuanian psychologist, Vlyuma Zygarnik, was just visiting Berlin as part of her research project. One evening, she went with other researchers to a restaurant. They had a wonderful evening talking and ordering delicious food. But there was one detail that drew her attention. It was the server. He would remember multiple orders perfectly without making a mistake about any dish, drink or person. And he wasn't using any kind of notes for that. Zygarnik together with other peers were really impressed. How did he do that? Was he a genius? Things got even more interesting after Zygarnik left the restaurant. Shortly afterwards, she realized that she had forgotten to take her purse. She immediately came back to the restaurant and asked the server if he could help her out and bring her purse. He looked at her confused and apologized, saying that he didn't really remember it where she had sat. And now Zygarnik was very confused too. How was it possible? He had just served them for hours and could remember all the orders, all the people and where they sat. And now he wasn't capable of recalling any details? The server explained that he just remembered the current orders and forgot them right after they were complete. This fact struck Zygarnik so much that she decided to study what actually happened that evening. She started research on human memory and as a result, she discovered and described a phenomenon that today we call the Zygarnik effect. Thanks to her research, we know today that the server was not a genius. He just perfected the art of managing his memory. The Zygarnik effect states that we remember the actions and tasks that are incomplete better than the ones that we have finished. And this is the reason why you still think about your job after you come back home. You've just left a whole bunch of incomplete tasks there. And because of that, instead of relaxing, you're still mentally stuck at your workplace. Even if you want to consciously focus on relaxing, it might not be that easy because the intrusive thoughts appear anyway. But that's not the end. Studies show that the Zygarnik effect impairs your cognitive performance and makes it harder for you to even focus on reading. But wait, isn't it all about finishing the tasks? Maybe it would be better to just finish all the tasks at your job and this would solve the problem. Well, of course it would. But who can do that? Let's be realistic. You cannot just finish all the tasks every day. There usually will be a at least one task or project that you will need to continue with the next day. Luckily, there's another way. Thanks to more recent studies, we know now that you can mentally complete and close the tasks so that they don't bother you in your free time. How to do this? The answer is build a good plan. What does it mean to build a good plan? You need to decide on three things. How, when and where you are going to finish or continue with your tasks. Thanks to a plan that contains all these three elements for every unfinished task, you will be able to switch off the Zygarnik effect. If you make a plan correctly, your intrusive thoughts will be gone and you will get your private life back. What you can do to make it even more effective for you, you can make your plan using statements like if X then Y. Whereas X, you put the context, which will be a clear signal to you to start the action. So this is the where and when part of the plan. It is supposed to be a kind of a trigger for you so that you will recognize it immediately. The why part should be the how. So a description of how you will react to your trigger. For example, you can build a sentence like this. As soon as I sit at the desk on Monday, I will call Susan to give her feedback on the status of her last order. In this statement, your context or trigger, however you want to call it, is sitting at the desk on Monday and your reaction to this context is calling Susan. Another example of a sentence in if x then y form might be, as soon as I come back from lunch, I will start working on the table for George. You can see that this sentence also contains both parts x and y. 
This type of sentence, if x then y, is super useful as it not only simplifies the process and turns off the zigzagging effect, it also partially automates your reaction in the future. Automation of behavior is a huge topic which I might describe in detail in the future, but for now you just need to know that thanks to it, you will be able to react with less effort, especially compared to deliberately changing or choosing your behavior in particular moments. Thanks to partial automation, your behavior happens without having to think very intensively about about. Much like brushing your teeth, you don't have to think of all the movements when you do it. Or when you greet your friends, there is usually a single pattern that you repeat over and over again with a particular person. You just say hello, talk, or shake hands with them. Have you noticed that? Of course you can choose a different way of doing it. However, there are some usual ways of you to do this. And to prepare your brain to execute your plan as if it was usual to you, use the form if x then y. After making such a plan, you might experience a huge relief. And if there is still some job-related thoughts appearing in your mind, just notice them and remember that you've made a plan for everything and that now it is time for something else. After that, release the thought and get back to relaxing or another action of your choice. Now that you know what your plan should look like, let's have a look at the process of creating it. Your plan should be written and stored in such a way so that you can come back to it when the execution time comes. So you don't take a half-torn piece of paper for your plan and put it into your pocket after it's ready. The plan should be written, for example, in a day planner that you use anyway. The main goal here is for you to have a reminder that is easily accessible to you. So make sure that your plan is kept somewhere where you regularly have to look during your working hours. If you're new to planning and don't have your planner yet, start small. Take a plain sheet of paper and write down some plan there and store it somewhere accessible, yet not exposed. For example, in a folder with other documents. You will get back to it when the time comes. Now, in order not to forget about your plan, you can set an alarm that will remind you about it. You can also add information on where you keep your plan. In this way, you won't have to worry about it. Alarms are a really great tool. I personally love setting alarms in my phone as thanks to them I can focus on my work, especially if I have tasks that happen at a fixed time like meetings. I just keep working until the alarm goes off and then just switch to another task without getting distracted by constantly having to check the time on my watch. Thanks to this method, a lot of these bothering thoughts just dissolve away or weaken significantly. Okay, now you know almost everything that you need, but as you want to master the planning routine, there are still two things to remember. Firstly, your plan should not be stored in a place where you relax. So not on a coffee table, not in a living room, and certainly not in your bedroom. At least make it not exposed. You want to detach yourself from work, not create yet another reminder about it. Secondly, if you make your plan in the evening, make it on paper. And if you really, really must have it on your computer or another digital device, make sure to build your plan at least a few hours before going to sleep. Backlit screens make it harder for you to fall asleep and you want to get your rest. A daily habit of putting off electronic devices, especially before going to bed, will do wonders to your sleep and calmness. Now it's all in your hands. If you have any questions or remarks, please let me know below in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Take care.